हेलो 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 या गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन आई वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ ए एस दो आर प्रेजेंट please uh, share the link to your friends so that they could also join today's class okay and those who have not joined please join quickly i will wait for a minute then we will start okay now uh, this is the fifth part of the lecture that is uh, on brachiopoda the invertebrate paleontology part is started now and the first point is brachiopoda okay today we were going to study about brachiopoda so let's begin now the first point uh, here the contents that we are going to study is the introduction the shell morphology structure and composition of shell external morphological features the features that are associated with posterior side of valve and the features on shell surface okay these points we are going to study today now first as you know the term brachiopoda what does that mean now here as you can see the greek word brachion it means arm and podos it means foot from where the word brachiopoda came okay the brachiopoda it means brachion means arm and podos means foot okay brachiopoda now in the case of brachiopoda what are their characteristic feature is that they are exclusively marine they are sessile benthic invertebrates and they are suspension feeder they are triploblastic coelomate grade with oligomerous body plan now in the case of sessile what do you mean by the term sessile sessile means they are attached to the substrate and benthic means they are attached to the sea bottom they are present on the sea bottom okay benthic and in the case of triploblastic coelomate grade with oligomerous body plan now what do you mean by this is in the case of triploblastic coelomate grade with oligomerous body plan as we have discussed in the previous cl uh, class about the grade and the body plan now in the case of triploblastic what does that mean that the body of the organism it is made up of three layers the body is made up of three layers okay the outer layer in ectoderm mesoderm endoderm just for your consideration i am telling this that the body is made up of three layers now this is triploblastic coelomate means that the body has a well defined body cavity and oligomerous means that the body is well segmented okay first that the body is made up of three layers it has a well defined body cavity and uh, the body cavity is well segmented with a uh, well defined organs within each segment now moving forward here we have the shell morphology in the case of shell morphology now see in this case this is a brachiopod shell as you can see that this shell towards the dorsal side it is at the dorsal side that is the lower part of the organism it is the larger in size and this shell on the top this shell which is present on the this shell sorry it is present on the ventral side that is the lower part it is present on the ventral side it is larger in shell uh, size and it is known as the pedicle valve the valve which is present on the dorsal side this is a dorsal side it is known as the brachial valve or the dorsal valve in this case of brachiopods the brachiopod shells they have two features that is their shells are in equivalved 
and equilateral. Now, in the case of inequivalent, what do you mean is that as we can see here that the ventral shell that is the pedicle valve that is the pedicle valve it is larger and the valve that is on the dorsal side that is the brachial valve it is small in size okay it is smaller that is why they are known as inequivalent. But one by one we will see different parts of the brachioport shell. Okay, first inequivalent means they are the valves are not of equal size. The pedicle valve or the ventral valve is larger, and the dorsal that is the <coughs> brachial valve it is smaller in size. And now inequilateral, what do you mean by the term inequilateral is that it is equal on all sides. See the shell margin it is equal on all sides that is why it is equilateral okay. Now this gives the shell a bilateral symmetry this is the symmetry plane see plane of symmetry okay. This is a bilateral symmetry plane which passes along the anterior posterior margin across the shell and divides the shell into two equal halves now see here if this is one half of the shell and this is the other half when it will be superimposed on this half see this is one half second half is this now the second half is superimposed on the first half then it will be a mirror image of the first half that is uh, it has a bilateral symmetry now in the case of the valves as you can see here in the figure this valve which is larger in size as I have said it is present at the ventral side it is called the pedicle valve it is the pedicle valve okay it is present at the ventral side or the lower part and that dorsal valve it is known as the brachial valve now the pedicle valve it is larger in size Another feature is that it consists of a fleshy stalk like body which is known as the pedicle. It is a fleshy stalk like body which is known as the pedicle. Now here as you can see what we have is the brachial valve. The brachial valve it is the dorsal valve. It is present at the dorsal side of the organism and it consists of a foot collecting organ which is known as lobophore or brachia so the name brachial valve okay now this foot collecting organ lobophore or the, uh, the brachia it is supported it is supported by a loop shaped calcareous ribbon it is called as brachydium okay the brachia is supported by a loop shaped calcareous ribbon it is known as the brachydium okay now moving forward here as you can see in the pedicle valve here we have the opening, a circular opening. It is the opening for the pedicle through which the pedicle comes out. And the use of the pedicle is that the pedicle is used for, in this case the pedicle it is used for attaching the shell to substrate. Okay. The pedicle is used for attaching the shell to the substrate. Now here moving forward what we see is that in the pedicle valve we have the circular opening. This is the opening which marks uh, the place from which the pedicle comes out and attached to the substrate. And here we have the teeth in the pedicle valve and on the adjoining brachial valve we have the sockets. Okay. Now moving forward here the 
third point is the structure and composition of the shell now in the case of the brachiopod shell the brachiopod shell has three layers then it is known as the outer non calcareous periostracum it is made up of proteinaceous material the middle calcareous primary layer which is made up of structureless crystalline calcite and an inner secondary layer which is made up of fine fibrous calcite now these three layers see here in this picture that is in a here in this picture a what we have is the layers of a brachiopod shell here here is the outer periostracum which is non calcareous and made up of proteinaceous material the primary shell layer which is made up of structureless crystalline calcite the secondary layer which is made up of fine fibrous calcite the cellular epithelium that secretes the cell okay the cellular epithelium from this the cell is secreted now in this case of brachiopod shell the brachiopod shell has microstructures they are known as uh, the punctae microscopic observation of the brachiopod shell have shown certain structures these structures according to them the shells are named as impunctate endopunctate and pseudopunctate in the case of the impunctate shell here the brachiopods do not have any punctae what do you mean by the term punctae is fine hollow tubular features that runs across the uh, shell layers in the shell okay now here what do you see is that in this case okay this case what you see is that here there is no like here you have tubular outgrowth that runs perpendicular to the shell surface or normal to the shell surface we do not have any such structure in this uh, picture okay there is no tubular outgrowth that runs normal to the cell surface and cuts across the layer these uh, as the shell is devoid of any punctate they are known as the impunctate shell okay here you can see that there is no punctate in the shell layer now in the case of endopunctate what do you mean in the case of endopunctate endopunctate shells are those that contain punctate okay that runs normal to the shell surface they contain tubular outgrowths of the mantle they are known as kk which penetrates the shell to connect with the periostracum by a brush like structure now here endopunctate in the case of endopunctate see this figure here in the case of endopunctate shell what are they how they are recognized here we have the tubular punctate here we have first feature of the endopunctate shell is the presence of punctate how this punctate presence are uh, means they appear is that there are tubular outgrowth from the mantle the epithelium consists of the mantle they these tubular outgrowth comes from the mantle and uh, they uh, proceeds across the layer and they connects to the periostracum by a brush like structure as you can see that from the mantle okay this tubular outgrowth it has formed from the mantle from the mantle now this tubular outgrowth it connects to the outer periostracum by a brush like structure okay it connects to the outer layer periostracum by a brush like structure in this case the tubular outgrowth of the mantle they are known as cecum or kk okay now in this case we have understood the endopunctate now in the case of pseudopunctate generally pseudopunctate shells they are found in the strophomanid brachiopods the shell layer is traversed by a set of irregular calcite rod which are known as talioli these are known as the irregular calcite rods which are known as the talioli which on the shell surface looks like punctate it looks like punctate means the punctate are actually absent but the irregular calcite rod they gives an appearance uh, at the cell surface like a punctate what do you mean by that see here what we have is this figure here we, we have the irregular uh, calcareous rods known as talioli these are the irregular 
calcareous rods they are known as the talulae and they they give an appearance of a punctae okay they give an appearance of a punctae these are known as the pseudopunctate shell means actually the shells do not consist of any punctae but due to the ap uh, presence of the rod irregular rod like talulae they have a appearance of a punctae at the surface okay they are known as the pseudopunctate shell where does uh, what are the examples of them are strophomanid brachiopod now in the case of strophomanid what we see in the strophomanid brachiopod they are now the strophomanid brachiopod they are an extinct group of articulate brachiopods okay that were present from lower ordovician to middle carboniferous okay the strophomanate brachiopods they are an extinct group of articulate brachiopod that were present from the lower ordovician to mid carboniferous time now articulate means they these brachiopods they are joined by teeth and socket okay in the case of brachiopods we will see it in further section they are divided into two types that is inarticulate and articulate in the case of inarticulate their shells are joined by muscles in the case of articulate it is joined by teeth and sockets now moving forward i hope this part is clear if there is any doubt you ask me okay now moving forward we have the external morphological features external morphological features of the brachiopods first we have the features that are associated with the posterior side of the valve now in the case of the posterior side of the valve here if we see that this is the posterior side of the brachiopod valve okay this is the posterior this is the anterior side the brachiopod is hinged along the posterior side that is the two shells they for are connected along the posterior margin side of the shell posterior side of the shell okay and they opens along the anterior side now in the case of the features that are found on the posterior side what are the features that are found generally the features that are found are umbo beak hinge pedicle opening foramen deltaerium notothaerium deltaedial and chilidial plates and deltaedium and chilidium plates now what do you mean by an umbo now in the case of an umbo umbo is the posterior protuberance of shell here as you can see in the case of posterior protuberance of shell the umbo is an elevated portion generally in the case of the shell when you hold it in the posterior part there is an elevated part of the shell this elevated part it is known as the umbo okay now in the case of a beak this elevated part it is called the umbo in the case of the beak the beak is the pointed extremity of the umbo is called the beak okay in this part it is called the umbo and the umbo its pointed extremity it is called the beak okay remember that the initial point through from which the shell grow it is the beak it marks the shell growth okay now in the case of the hinge what do you mean by the hinge in the case of the hinge the hinge line it is hinge line in the case of the hinge line the line uh, of junction along which the posterior valve and the along which the dorsal and the 
ventral valve they attach this is known as the hinge line say in this case this is the hinge line see it is curved and here it is straight okay it is the line of junction it marks the line of junction where the ventral or the uh, ventral and the dorsal valve they meet that is the pedicel valve and the brachial valve they join along this line this is known as the hinge line okay line of junction this is the line of junction of two valves this is the hinge line now in the case of the hinge line the hinge line it may be straight curved long or short now depending on these factors whether the hinge line is straight curved long or short there are two types that is the strophic shell in which the hinge line is long and straight and the non strophic shell in which the hinge line is curved and short here we can see that the hinge line is long and straight here we can see it is curved in nature and short now in the case of a strophic shell please write the example of a strophic shell the strophic shell it is uh, the example is spirifer and spirifer if yeah spirifer and in the case of the non strophic shell what we have it is teri brachula please note it down in the strophic shell we have spirifer non strophic shell we have teri brachula okay so moving forward we have the pedicel opening in the case of the pedicel opening as we have seen here see here what we have in this figure in this figure this is the pedicel valve or the ventral valve and this is the brachial valve or the dorsal valve okay now in the case of the pedicel opening this is the pedicel opening through which the fleshy stalk like pedicel it comes out okay and it attaches to the substrate okay it attaches to, to the substrate this is the pedicel which comes out through the pedicel opening so pedicel opening is the area uh for the passage of the pedicel so that the organism could attach it to the substrate is known as the pedicel opening now foramen what do you mean by the foramen is that here in the case of when the there is a circular or semicircular opening on the uh, pedicel valve or the ventral valve for the passage of the pedicel it is known as the foramen this circular opening it is known as the fora men okay two it is two now in the case moving forward we have the deltaidium and the notothaidium what do you mean by a deltaidium in the case of a deltaidium see this is the fora men okay in the case of a deltaidium deltaidium is a opening triangular opening deltaidium is a triangular opening that is present on the ventral valve or the pedicel valve of the brachiopod shell that has its apex towards the umbo and its base towards the hinge line it is known as the deltaidium okay when similar feature like this in this is the triangular opening that is present on the pedicel valve so this opening is called as deltaidium when it is present say this is the brachial valve okay this is the brachial valve 
and here also there is the brachial valve when this opening it is present in the brachial valve what is it is called it is called noto thyria okay remember these things okay now what we have pre moving forward what we have is the deltaidium and gelidium plates as there are the openings deltaidium and notothyrium they need to be covered so uh, delta uh, deltaidium and gelidium uh, they are the plates that cover the deltaidium that is present on the pedical valve and gelidium uh, uh, they cover the notothyrium opening on the brachial valve i will say once more that is in the case of these plates that is deltaidium and gelidium plates these plates say this is the uh, pedicle valve this is the brachial valve okay as you can see in this section this is the pedicle valve this is the brachial valve this is the pedicle and this is the brachial valve now the triangular opening that is present in the pedicle valve is known as the deltaidium and that present on the brachial valve this triangular sorry this triangular opening it is present on the brachial valve it is known as the noto thy Theum. Now, in this case, when a single plate cover the deltaidium opening, it is known as a deltaidium. Uh, okay. And when similarly a single plate covers the notothyrium opening or on the brachial valve, it is known as chilidium plate. They are the single plate, one plate. In this case, as you can see in this figure, this figure. a single plate that covers the deltaidium it is known as <coughs> deltaidium <coughs> and a single plate covering the notothyrium it is known as the chilidium <coughs> sorry <coughs> sorry now moving forward what we have is the deltaidial and the chilidial plates what do you mean by these uh, plates are that they are a pair of plates they are a pair of plates they are a pair of plates that covers the deltaidium and the notothyrium opening they are known as the deltaidial and the chilidial plates <coughs> now as you can see here that here there is a pair of plate this is a plate and this is a plate okay this is one plate this is the other plate as uh, there is a pair of plate that covers the deltaidium opening the, this is known as the deltaidial when similar plates this is like this this plate uh, this plate is also present sorry this plate is also present a pair of plate that covered the notothyrium opening this pair of plate it is known as chili dial okay just remember this thing that <clears throat> what do you mean by deltaidium and chilidium plates and deltaidial and chilidial plate you can be confused when it is deltaidium and chilidium it is a single plate it is deltaidial and chilidial a pair of plates okay now moving forward the features on shell surface now the features that are present on the shell surface they are of different types they can be growth line they can be radial lines they can be a sulcus median sulcus or ridge now in the case of the growth line okay first we will see what is the growth lines are see in this case if you consider this this one figure okay pedicle opening now this is the posterior part this is the anterior part okay so this margin this margin it represents the anterior margin 
okay this is the anterior margin now this is the posterior side ha huh? that uh, where the cell is hinged okay now in the case of the growth line the growth lines are the concentric lines these are the concentric lines that uh, represents the successive growth stage of the organism which starts from the umbonal area which starts from the umbonal area and moves towards the anterior margin and they are parallel to the anterior margin okay these are the growth lines these are the growth lines the first importance is that they are concentric in nature second they represents the successive growth the stage of the organism third they starts from the umbonal area and moves towards the anterior margin and fourth is that they are parallel to the anterior margin okay these are the growth lines now radial lines that are present on the shell these are the radial lines now in the case of the radial lines these lines are alternate ridge and furrows radial lines they represents alternate ridge and furrows that starts from the abdominal area and migrates towards the anterior margin okay now here the radial lines they are of three different types when they are very coarse they are known as capillae or phylla when they are moderately coarse they are known as uh, costae just correct it costae and when they are very coarse to uh, very coarse ridges and furrows they are known as ribs okay now in the case of the radial lines the radial lines have different uh, means their thickness varies if they are very fine radial lines they are known as capillae or phylla when they are moderately coarse they are known as costae when they are very coarse ridges and furrows they are known as ribs now one thing remember that when the growth lines when the concentric growth lines they become very coarse when these growth lines say it has become very coarse these growth lines they have become very coarse in nature okay they become very coarse okay i'm drawing really bad if you could not understand please ask me okay this line it is uh, coarser growth lines they what they are known as they are known as rugae okay the coarser coarse concentric growth lines okay they are known as rugae now i hope the growth line and the radial lines it is clear to you if there is any doubt please ask okay now the median sulcus median sulcus the term sulcus it means depression what do you mean by a median sulcus is that it is a major rounded depression the median sulcus is a major rounded depression on the ventral side of the shell along longitudinal midline now what do that mean is that the median sulcus is it is like here you can see that in this picture the pedicle valve is shown the pedicle valve is shown that is the ventral side is shown now in this we have a major rounded depression it is a depressed part it is the depressed part okay this depressed part it is called a sulcus it moves from the along the median longitudinal line okay it moves along the median longitudinal line it is called the sulcus now corresponding to the depression there will be elevated region what are they called they are called as median ridges they are the corresponding elevated region that are present on the dorsal side that is they are present on the brachial valve okay <clears throat> corresponding to the median sulcus what are they say here as we have we have the depressed part these are the depressed part okay this is the depressed part and 
the, here we can see that it is the elevated part okay as you can see this is the elevated part similarly here you also can see this is the elevated part and the surrounding there is the depressed part okay now this elevated part it is known as the ridge when it is present along the longitudinal midline it is known as the median ridge okay so we have the uh, uh, furrows and the ridges that is the sulcus and the median ridge, uh, the ridges here we have the median sulcus we have the median ridge similarly as you can see that due to the elevated region folds have developed that is the ridges have developed and due to depression sulcus have developed okay now in this case these are the parts that uh, we are we have studied today now is there any uh, difficulty with this part is there any difficulty you can ask me okay uh, okay is there any difficulty in any part I hope there is no difficulty in any part because no questions are coming. Please tell me is there any difficulty then I will uh, explain it again. Okay. Yeah, those present. Have you understood? Is there any difficulty? I will wait for a minute after which I will stop today's session. Okay. Okay. So I am not getting any doubt from your side. I hope this is uh, clear to you this part even if, if there is any doubt you can ask me in the upcoming uh, video lectures okay if there is any doubt okay students then thank you for being with me and uh, the next class it will be on uh, day after uh, tomorrow okay 12 pm be uh, on time and thank you from AES for being with me. Okay. Thank you.